<laughs> hey guys. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to click over there, isn't yeah. it? I got my hey guys in for Liz, who has hopefully made it to Las Vegas by now. I talked to her yesterday. She was on the tarmac. Uh, they spent two hours on the tarmac here in Springfield. Oh my goodness. And then they got to Dallas and they missed their flight going out there. And I was like, hey, just you're Who in the airport. It? There's places places there you can just take care of your sorrows. You can drown them away if you need to. Hopefully everybody can hear okay. Got Terry with me today. Terry's going to be doing a drop-in liner on a bag that I, I made with Anderson's help a little bit. He did the Heck stitching. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Anderson's faster at stitching. And he came in to help me with the needle. He's like, what else can I help with? And I said, you want to sew it up? He's like, okay. Yep. So we did that. So uh, this is the tote that we're making. It's the so simple tote bag pattern that we have. I did the medium tote, which the medium tote on the finished size is 10 and a half. Uh, let's see. 10 and a half tall by 12 mm -hmm. inches wide right. and six inches um, in in the depth, the the like a, what would be the gusset size or something along those right. lines. My piece of wood here is, <clears throat> there we go. I was resting my foot on it and I about fell over on the table. So I did the medium sized toe and what I did was uh, make a few modifications to it. So we're gonna spice it up a little bit. Exactly. You're gonna do a drop in liner for this one with the roll top on it. And I'm gonna make this bag again mm -hmm. that's not gonna have a liner. Right. I know we talked about doing a zippered uh, liner for it, but I don't think either of us got planned enough to get to that point. So we'll see where we get. Thanks Heck for yeah. the, the nice hat thing. We're going to try to get um, some blank hats that we can sew leather patches on. I got to get Rusty enough noticing my hat where yes. he's like, hey, I need to have one of those too. And then I can get some blank hats and do some leather patches. Let's do it. So, all right. I've got my Twitch stream I can see up there, the chat. I got my YouTube chat that I can see there. Uh, let's see. Bigger strap. Maybe they're talking about something else. Ron says hello to hello. you. We've got a 26 um, set up over there. Terry's got 69 thread on the top and the bobbin yep. to do the liner. So we're going to go through that part of it uh, to get started. And then I will go over how I modified this pattern to make it work for what I wanted to do. So take it away, Terry. I'll take my pieces over here. I'll take your pieces. So this is the canvas that we offer, and I have the bag. Uh, yep. I think I put the bag somewhere. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that I put There's the enough here that you could probably put uh, four mediums um, with this canvas. So if you play it right, it's it's pretty awesome to be able to have um, canvas enough for, for four. I have... A regular pin, but I put my silver pin in it and pinched it like you would a regular pin, um, so it's easier to handle. So you're just tracing the pattern straight on just to the canvas, straight the, onto the canvas, the same size and everything. Right same now. size and everything. Yep. And like any silver pin, you kind of gotta go back and forth, back and forth, just to make sure that you're. The markings are good because it's super sad when you pull it up and there's no markings. You have to start all over again. So it looks like the YouTube is having a, an issue at the moment. So if you're on Facebook, jump over to, I'm going to have to end it on Facebook because uh, the way that I'm doing it doesn't seem to be working right now. It keeps on dropping. Uh, drop me frames and reconnect. Okay, here I'm going to pick it up, and voila, we have the markings. All right. So we're going to take a scissor and just come along there and cut the, the whole thing, the whole pattern, the same pattern as your regular tote. We're going to come in probably a quarter of an inch when we go to sew it up. And if you want it a little bit looser and smaller in your bag, um, of course, just come in a little bit farther. And you're when you go to sew this, you're just going to be sewing it 
um, as you would for the inside of the bag. So if you had a flowery pattern, make sure that you you sew it wrong side. Are you a le are you left handed? Too? I I am a lefty. Good. Lefty. Troy, lefty with that. lefty. Um, you said this was a lightweight earth. Yeah. Yes. Three three dash seven two four one four. I thought it went with the bag really well. Yeah, I think it's the closest one that we have. I think the biscuit color would have been a little bit light. So I don't know what we did with the package for it, but... Should be in the catalog for sure. It is on page 161. 161. So while you work on that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this little tote up here on the wall behind us, and I will... Now, if we do this pocket that we talked about, mm -hmm. we will want to sew that in first before you start sewing everything else together, because that would not be fun. That way you can get your placement. And now, are you going to trim this down any, or are you making it the exact size when you do I'm it making it the exact size because the... The quarter inch is not going to be bulky in your bag. If you're if you're doing a lighter weight bag, I would probably uh, thin it down a little bit more. Size your pattern down. Size your pattern down, yeah. yeah. But with this canvas, it's so lightweight anyway, it's not even, you're not even going to have any issues with it whatsoever. But see how, I mean, that was one, then you'd be able to get two and You'd be able to get four medium totes out of out of one piece of canvas, which is pretty awesome. Terry is in her right mind. Do what? They said you were in your right mind. <laughs> so the process that I took was thinking about uh, thinking about me for the tote that I wanted. I pulled one off the floor that we have there, and just kind of figuring how much I wanted to go up uh, with the bottom to make a little bit stiffer. So I'm using the vintage tan. Nope, the Vintage Cowboy Collection. It was Vintage Tan, but now I think it's just the Vintage Cowboy Collection. So I went in and um, took one of those ones that you had, and I took uh, uh, just a measuring device, and I was like, okay, about three inches up on the bag is where I want, where if it's sitting on there. Right. So I just took from, uh, on this pattern itself, it has kind of the H shape there, and I just went up three inches, marked a line, and then went to the other side and did three inches and put a straight edge on it and cut out the bottom piece of the pattern that I have. If I can reach it. There you go. So, and then I just cut out uh, the bottom pieces of it. Of course, the top I, I got rid of and just kind of going to measure that. But I cut out um, on the black leather. I took and cut that shape out. So it should just match. So that's what I have for cutting that piece out. And then measured around to get the side panels that go with it. And uh, I'm going to roll this this edge here. I'm going to roll over. I'll glue it. And then I'll stitch these two back together. And it should fit. I'll lay it on the pattern again to kind of make it fit the same size. And we will go from there. So, Terry, you do that. I'm going to roll an edge and get mine going. So I cut out a 12 and a half by six and a quarter piece of the leather that Tony's going to use on the bottom. Uh, and that is the bridal double shoulder in black. So if you go look on the website, it's type, hit the little magnifying glass. BDS is the item number on that. And then just click um, black. Let me get some more parts over here that I need. Parts. I need something to glue on. This is an extra piece. Uh, I got a piece of paper here. All right. Thank you. Yeah. This is my uh, top part of my pocket, so I'm just going to stitch it and then uh, to roll my edges, and then I'm going to decide how I want my pockets to be sewn into the canvas. Yeah. What was that? I rolled my edge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sew that down. And then I'm going to, uh, when I go to roll this out, yeah. decide 
what kind of pockets I want. You know, if I oh, want okay. just two pockets or. Do you want to hammer that for you? Uh, ooh. I just put everything right there on the floor for safekeeping. What's that? There's a raid happening. A raid happening? Yeah, Mecca form. Mecca, Mecca form raiding with a party of 19. I, what do you do, Mechaform? Welcome in on Twitch. So if Check you guys out. don't know about Twitch, Twitch is a whole community. It looks like they are also in... I can't see what they stream. we got some first-time ch first time chatters in there. We are just working on a tote bag. Let's see if I can do that without breaking the granite. Oh, man, have you done that? Uh, I have not. Oh. I have not done that. Well, that's a good thing. What do you do, uh, Mecha Form? What's your, what's your crafting or your, why, what, what are you doing on your stream today? Metal work? Uh, in, okay, they're in the makers and crafters as well. So there's different categories on Twitch where you can just, Watch people that are in the same category you are, and we fall into the makers and crafters. Small machine tools, lathe Ooh. and milling. Nice. Ivy says, "Thanks for all your help when you bought uh, when she bought her twenty six. Well, you're welcome. I need to get Jim a phone number of a, another customer that was having. Um, some class four issues, but I ran out of time this morning getting prepped for this and haven't got him that phone number yet. But if they are watching, they were on Facebook, so they won't <laughs> they won't be watching on Facebook since I turned it off. Let's see. Justin, did we use OBS twenty eight last week? Mm -hmm. In live, live shopping? shopping? Yeah. Okay. So it must just be the multi output. Well, thanks for raiding us. I hope you had a good stream and some of your people would like to hang out here with us if they would. We're just going to make a tote bag. Hopefully. Thank you. We are Springfield Leather Company. We're a craft, um, a leather supplier. We do have some finished goods, but most of our stuff is just us crafting um, it or selling it, selling supplies to crafters. We have fun all day. That is true. Everybody wants to Every be in this. Everybody wants to be in this room. That's what they really want. That's what they like, want. Like, hey, can we come hang out? Can I borrow your hammer? hammer? There you are. Thank you. Yeah. Mm, don't be breaking the granite. I have not. You broken never have. Granite. I have not broken the granite yet. You have the same problem with putting tools down and losing them every time I set them down. We've got Texas in here. Uh, I saw Anya. I think I believe is from. Um, South Africa. Wow. Oh, there's that Andrea. She's here on YouTube. She was wanting to get help with the tension. You sure. can have, have him call in and ask for Jim. Have your husband call in and ask for Jim, and Jim will be able to help. A question from World Theater. Okay. Uh, with the style you're doing, did you just cut out the out a portion of the pattern for the bottom and another portion for the top. Yeah. So I cut, I did the whole pattern on a piece of paper, and then I measured what I wanted for the bottom to be, and I wanted it to be about three about three inches uh, from the bottom to there. So I just kind of guesstimated, and then I just sliced the pattern up and then did that part of it. And then if I lay this back, if I lay this piece back over, can I use that just a second? You bet. Uh, so I don't know if you can see it really, um, but here's the two different pieces. Let me do it this way. You should be able to see. There, there we go. go. So that's the piece that I cut out, and then I just took a measuring uh, utensil. 
and I measured um, that. So I wanted, I gave myself about an inch into this for an overlap for sewing them back together because I'm going to do a rolled edge and do um, uh, a roll a rolled edge and a double double stitch line. So that's about nine inches. So I just gave myself a little bit more um, than that. And here's the piece that I cut out for it, which is about what I have. So I ended up cutting this other piece for about an inch and a half overlap. Um, and I cut it right about nine and a quarter. But do what works for you. Adjust the pattern for what yeah, works. It's what's for if you, if you want your bag a little bit taller, make it a little bit taller. Super fun to be able to do whatever you want to do with it. This bag, yeah. this bag design um, kind of has the flare out at the top. If you mm -hmm. don't want the flare, cut your sides straight. Yep. Use it. Use the pattern as a guide, and then that's what we're doing is we're just spicing it up a little bit. Oh, sorry. You're good. You're good. I'm a good sharer. Okay. So I'm just rolling my edge out. Took it to the bell knife skiver and Andy skived it up for me on the edge. And so now, this, is, this is where I'm going to place my pocket. And I think I'm going to like cut one a little smaller. That way it would be good for a phone and then maybe some cash. Who knows? Oh, who carries cash anymore? What do you want? Uh, the Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep painting the utils until I get the right one. Tony actually does leather work? Yeah. One punny dad, but he ain't that punny. <laughs> I'm going to do four inches. Four inches. Will that fit my phone in case I carry this toe? It will. Perfect. Look at that. Be a little bit tight. Can we bring it in a little more? Maybe maybe a five inch one. Uh, it's all fixable. Okay, you just mark a new line. Mark a new line with this silver pin is just pretty awesome where you can just erase it and decide what you want to do. All right, so now. Paper up. And I'll change, get this sewed up and change your thread, huh? Yeah. That's exactly right, Connie. The, the best part about this pattern is just a starting point. Find yourself a starting point on all the patterns that you have. And then customize them to work for what you really need or what you what you want. I think that's what's fun about any pattern that we have here is uh, it can be more customized to anything. Yeah. Except for a holster. But we did Denny and I did a video on making a pattern. For your gun, drawing it out and making a holster out of that, a single loop um, holster. And we didn't have a pattern we went with, we had a gun. That is what we used for our pattern. So I'm going three inches from the top, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half from the top. Keith, what's your question about the handle part? On the pattern, we have a link that we have the handles. I thought you were silencing that thing. I thought it did. Man, I did. Be like Kevin in here just dinging all the time. There it is. It's done now. Thickness, Tony. Thickness. Thanks for the follow, Casey. The thickness of this bottom piece is right around a five ounce, and the uh, Vintage Cowboy Collection is four to five ounce. The Vintage, uh, the Cowboy Collections 
a little bit floppy. So if I hold this piece up, it lays. If I made a tote just out of this, it's not going to stand up very well. You know, it's got, a, it just drapes all the way around. If I take this, even though I folded the edge, if I take and hold it this way, it doesn't, it doesn't flop as much as this. So I needed something to help stand it up a little bit more. So that's why I went with a, a stiffer leather for bo a bottom. Um, before I split this down, though, this was a 9 to 10, I believe is what it came in. And I cut my handles straight out of that. I believe they're 8 ounces. I have a way to test that. Dog harness down. <laughs> this is at, right at a 9 ounce. So and I didn't do anything to it. Little spot there was eight and a half. So eight to nine ounce is what I did my handles at. I guess it just really uh, depends on the person on their handles. Uh, you can just do them just flesh raw, or you can. Thin it down and, and do both sides. Double layer. Double yeah. layer it. And that's yeah, for this, with this bridle is waxed. It has a nice wax content on the back. Uh, all of those colors are super nice. And you can use it and use the, the back side of that really nice. So what I'm going to take is our SLC Pro Beveler number four. And I'm going to uh, do my edges of my handle. He does. Denny called him leather worker one day. Denny did. Hey, Mildred. I do work at a leather shop, and sometimes when I get, if I get overwhelmed or if I get a lot going on or I just need to step away from my computer, then I'll go do a little bit of leather crafting here and there just to kind of set myself back at a point and get back in the right mind to go back to editing the website. Um, so number four here, but. This leather being this half inch that I did, I just cut it with a strap cutter, which we did a video on using a strap cutter. We used a video doing the leather gauge. Man, we're, it's a good thing we got those shorts going on, Justin. Yeah, I know, right? Got me practice back up. I'm just going to use a ruler to help push whenever I'm pushing this against this. Whoops, stab my leather there. Uh... Oh, I missed it. Just barely. I stabbed so I got it my, my pocket. Got my pocket on. Yeah. Just go to that. There you go. Boop. Let me put, brighten this let's, up. Let's try your let's try your phone. Okay. How'd we do? I got look at got YouTube notifications. Make sure to go live on YouTube. Ta da. Look at that. Fits right in there with room to spare. So if I had a bigger phone, I could do that. Let's see, another question. Did I use a glow force to make a patch on my hat? Yes. We have two videos on the glow forge, but we need to do another one on the glow forge. Why you ask? Because lasers. That's why. Those glow forges are amazing. Is there something specific that you were looking for, um, Andrea? On the on the glow forge. <laughs> Tony being in my in his right mind goes like oil and water. I didn't I was as annoyed as people get with me, I'm surprised that anybody is even here watching. <laughs> You can ask Terry, if I'm not annoying people, then I'm not doing my job right. So I'm gonna bevel both Shoot. I'm gonna bevel both sides of this strap. So the front and the back. That way when you hold on to it with your hand, kind of curves nice and around. This number four is pretty good. The five was a little bit big. The three would actually be okay um, too. As your leather gets a little bit thicker, you can use a thicker um, a, a higher corner on it for your edge beveler. A lot of it's personal preference, so take you a little scrap piece and then just bevel it and see if you like the way that feels. If you don't like the way it feels, then go up, go down, whichever one fits your fancy. So 
three, when somebody says, hey, can I do that? Usually the question is, try it. Exactly. Try it. If it works, then yes, you can do it. If if you if it doesn't work, then no, you can't do it. I have so many different pieces of scrap of um, for one to test out a machine for what stitch length I want because with the twenty six, um, it's got the gauges on it, but you you never know if it's the right one you want for project you're wanting to work on. Um, super handy to have a different scraps to where you can be able to bevel or sew or whatever. So we want to use the glow forge to incorporate it into leather projects. Oh. Cutting and then using a hat patches are a perfect example of that, but that's really pretty straightforward. Um, there's a few other projects, live live hinges, living hinges. What do they call those things? You know what I'm talking about? Where you use them? You use ninjas? Huh? The ninjas? No, 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 hinges. Oh, then I don't. You can probably laser hin uh, ninjas too. Yeah, they might fight back, but <laughs> <laughs> but they have wood, and so you cut little grooves um, oh. in it. The laser lasers out different kind of grooves in it, and so when you use a wood, you can use it to fold around. I think it's called live hinge or living hinge, one of the two. But on their forum, they have um, some free downloads, SVG files that you can. I'm like mold. It's always beneficial, but it grows on you. <laughs> it's not always beneficial, but but it grows on you. Yeah, I like to say that I'm like a fun guy. You but are I like can, a fun guy. But you can only say part of that thing. It f Keep me in the dark and feed me crap. All right. Handle's beveled. Oh, let's see. Hey, Tony. Should do a short video on leather piping on a class 26. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. We have the Justin's piping. over there taking notes. I can hear him taking notes right now. When you do piping, you always want to make sure that your leather is a lot wider than what you're wanting to do. That's let's see, Casey says that was interesting. Why did you put your finger under the corner before you are ready to turn? Me? I guess. I, I don't remember. I put my finger under a corner. <laughs> huh? Why did I put my finger under the corner? Hmm. Um, so, if we switch to the top here. Here is the, the finished side of my leather. So, this would be the, the normal front side. The... And then here is the flesh side. But like I said, this bridle has a nice wax on it. You can see once I split it down, once once I split it down, it does go to more of that veg look. But if I took Tokenol, Toko Pro, Gumtrack, I could put that back on there and it would uh, smooth it back out again. But I'm not going to. It'll wear that same way. At the bottom of your tote bag, it should be just fine. When you were sewing the pocket. When I sew in the pocket, I put my finger. I, when you turn these corners, uh, you've got that little bit of pleat. Where's this at? Yeah. Pleat. So you just kind of have to put your finger there to make sure that it's going to lay the way you really want it to lay instead of the way it wants to like turn out. No. Well. So just to get that canvas to uh -huh. lay a little bit better uh -huh. so you can make that lay properly when it goes right. up. What ounce leather do you use for your piping? And what do you use for the cord? We have Weed Eater Line. Weed Eater Line's a great mm -hmm. one. You can get it from us or if you got a Lowe's, a Home Depot, whatever. Mm -hmm. Ace Hardware. I don't, I'm not particular to anyone. 
one that sells cordage, yeah. you can use that weed eater cord for. And then just get whatever you would like it to be, whether you, if you want it bigger, get the bigger weed eater cord. If you want small, get it for those little bitty electric right. battery trimmers. I have even used uh, old t-shirts and just laid it in there and rolled it up. And it, it does really good. We have that bolo cord stuff out there, too, that you could use. It'd be a little more flexible even yeah. than that plastic. Yeah. But that stuff is really it works quite nice. Really you well. can use, I've seen people use rope for it. Anything that's round and it's going to hold that shape that works for you is going to work. Yeah. And guess what? If it doesn't, then you found out something that doesn't work and don't use that again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's what we're about. Trial, trial and error. Yep. Where are you at on yours? I'm all done. Oh, do you need your tote bag? I need a tote bag. Okay, well, look, I just finished this one up for you. Woo! Yesterday. Look at that. We're going to slide this in. So, you know, you make sure that you sew what's going to be hidden. Well, there's a way to test what, what you're asking there, Connie, before we even get it. If I clip it, will you clip this side in here? Clip it to the tote bag. Okay. And I'm going to put my phone in there. Is it heavy enough? Is the canvas heavy enough to support the pocket? Or should we put a stabilizer on the back? We're getting ready to find out. Here, drum roll. I hope I've answered everybody's question. I'm trying to be really good about yeah. reading them. Since I don't have my Liz here. She can read them better than I could because my. All right. So here's my phone. I'm going to stick it down in the pocket there. There you go. So it, I can feel that it's weighting the pocket one way or another, but is it, it's not really dragging that canvas down in there. Mm -hmm. It seems to be doing all right. And that's what you, what'd you thin your pocket to? Three ounce? Uh. I got a way to check it. I think so. And then I skived it. Um, uh, you're good. Let me. Looks like it's three and a half. But that's that stiffer veg that has a little more rigidity just yep. for the bridal uh, double shoulder. So it has a little more rigidity. We'll have to do a piping video that's just a piping video. I'm gonna Come do video with us and make undies. Putting this on. Uh, you're doing that. I gotta get. I gotta get my. So while I'm doing this, we need to change our thread so you can be able to use it because we'll be using the same. And by me use it, <clears throat> she means her. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I still gotta get my. I gotta put some basting tape on and figure out where. I need to put my handle somewhere because I don't need them quite yet. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm done with that because I think I'm going to use basting tape for the rest of it. Uh, I'm done with this piece. I need this piece. So I'm going to set my bottom in place there. It's always important to have your bottom in place. And then I'm going to take, line up my, my top piece. Um, and since I'm not doing, the last one I did a roll edge, so I held it over just a little bit. So I'm going to line up the top of this and the edges and let it run underneath this black piece. And then since I don't have something to mark it with. I got a pin. That's okay. I don't need a pin because I want it to be on the oil tan. I'm going to tuck Ooh. it just a little bit. So if you don't have a little marking device or a scribe or whatever, Use what you got. I got a harness needle. Very nice. Yeah. And all I'm going to do here is just give me a little bit of a line of where I need that to go on. Check it. I've got enough of a line on there. And that'll show me where I need to put the basting tape on my vintage cowboy. I did on this as well. You can see um, had them a bell knife the edges on this as well. So when we get it all sewn up, that seam looks 
tucks in. When we turn it the other way, it tucks in real nice. Line up my edge with my pattern so that it fits what it's like. Let's see, hold on. Do you remember asking about a leather rope? The piping is what I was asking for, to have actual leather piping for a handle. You could use rope if you, mm -hmm. even if you took a piece of leather and you rolled it on itself and got it small enough. Clayton has used leather uh, inside for piping. So now I've got those places marked and I can put some tape on from there. I'm gonna come make some, some undies for our live video. Let me put my scribing tool back right there. So Terry's got me some tape here. And I'm just going to put it inside that line just a little bit. Just so that tape doesn't show. Did everybody get some rain? No, we got a lot of rain. Yes, we did. It was very well needed, though. I know. There we have that. I have some very crappy snips back here that I will use to cut that off. <laughs> did I did I answer Lil Fear's question? Tesla's being really nice to Chevy. She called him mold too. Uh -oh. But her favorite mold. You know, not all molds is bad. Right? It's like not all snakes are bad. Hey, Andrea. Okay. We're ready to go. Where are we going? To sew. Machine's all ready. Machine is ready to sew. Look at this stitch. Oh, well, that looks good. Very nice. <clears throat> kind of answer the question. But good enough. Basically, no is the answer. No <laughs> leather rope. Well, the the boa cord or what's that other stuff? What did I do with my catalog? Oh, here I put it. What is that stuff called? That's the parachute cord. Paracord. I guess you could use that too if you wanted. There's a, I don't know where it is in the catalog. I know where it's on the retail floor. There's, um, uh, right when you walk out on the bead side from the back, you can, Paracord. it's just right there. It's not the paracord, it's a leather, it's a leather cord, not the bolo, not the braided bolo. Mm. But we have a few different um, thicknesses around for it. Boot string. Uh, yeah, kind of like that. Nobody watches on the retail, so I won't be able. Yeah, to, I won't be able to get them to come back here and get it. All right, so I'm going to line up my edge and lay this down to the line that I scribed on there. There's one side. Leather boot string is not round. Give me a second. Let me take up this other one, and Terry's going to sew around that. Are you sewing or am I sewing first? Whichever. 
Or you can sell both of them while I go get it. Oh. If anybody wants to know how I get out of doing the hard sewing part so I don't look like a fool on the sewing machine, this is how. <laughs> Ask more questions that I need to leave the room for. Twenty-two crazy days this year, starting Ooh. November the ninth. Russell Very just nice. told me another thing that him and Kevin had talked about that the retail um, is going to be open starting November the fifth at nine a.m. instead of ten on Saturdays. Oh, that's sweet. There's so many people that come from out of town that man, have that. Let me hammer on that. Okay, I will be right back. I'm going to go pull it through the hole. Okay. I don't know what that means. Hey, Eric. Good to see you. I know it's been a little bit, but I'm crafting a tote. The tote that Terry has in her hand, where I'm making that again, and she's putting a liner in that one. I'll be right back. Let me go to the floor. Make sure you get all the holding, stuff done while I'm gone. I'm holding down the fort, yeah. right? All by myself. Here we go. Huh? The Perry show now. Perry. Oh. So when I put the tote together, I uh, just took a quarter of an inch lower from my canvas to from the bag, and then I'm going to tape tape right here where the on the bag, and then turn it under. That way, you don't have the canvas and the leather that you're trying to do a big bulk. Um, Turn. Trying to turn all of that under is um, a feat in itself. So just making sure that you don't have so much to turn under makes it a really nice transition. I tell you what, I don't know, and Justin will have to answer all these questions because. I, I wouldn't be able to see him. Has ever turned an edge and done without basting tape. I'm telling you what, basting tape is the bomb diggity. That's my word. Yeah. Bomb, bomb diggity. Well, I used the glue to turn the edge on this black and then decided to do the basting tape over the other part. That way it's a little bit less messy and I can get that tape right where I need it. Yeah, and you can pull it off and put it back on. Yep. Or take it off. So if you were needing something that's leather, this is some sort of fibered leather, but it's lace. This one's two millimeter. Hmm, right over there. So you can see there's this lace. Then we have it in four millimeter. I don't know if you can see the core. Uh, there is kind of a leather looking core, but that's a four millimeter. No, it has a little bit of squish to it, but not a lot. And then you get up into this. I'm not sure how thick this is, but there's that that thickness of that. Um, but I mean, weed eater line depends on how thick you want your. And you can double them up too. I mean, it's not gonna, not gonna show uh, doubling up your rope or your twine or. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, let me get some. Let me get my handles back out here while you, while you do that. I'm gonna token all my handles. The lace is round. Yes. Round lace. Um. You want me to sew that? <clears throat> sure. I'm going to use some uh, token all on the, these. That's what I have in here. I'm not going to use the black. I'm just going to use clear. Can't tell online. It's hard to make a 2D picture look 3D. I guess if I took it, took it from the end of it, then you could. That might be better. I, there's no telling how old those pictures are because I don't remember ever taking pictures of it. Of what? That round lace over there. Oh, yeah. All we have online, All we have online is a two. They should be able to find it if you call in. Yeah. 
Well, Tony, this is fun. Good. I'm glad somebody's having a good time. I should go get Denny's little jig he has to put oh, straps yeah. in. One that's on his table? Uh huh. Well, you I know. Said that, I said that yesterday, too. And you can see that I got prepared to bring it in here. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, used to beads. It's on the bead side, so I assume that the main use is in bolos and beading. Have you ever made a bolo? I have not. I want to do one. We got the cord out there for it. I... Do we have any patterns? What? Go to the store and buy a bolo tie and then <sighs> use that. I see. Or cut your string, put ends on it, and put you a slide. Do we sell the slides? Yep. There oh, yeah. is thicker. We have four well, we have four millimeter and whatever that really thick stuff was. I would tell you the number if I what does this does this black roll have it on there? Let's see. Zero nine nine two oh six. Nope, that is the water that's the paracord watermelon. How about this side? Nope. <laughs> black four millimeter. Uh Justin, will you type in? Four millimeter lace, lace four millimeter. You need more Terry. Well, oh, <laughs> I'm over here just a clipping, just a clipping, just about ready to sew it up. It's just always nice to have these clips so you can be able to. Uh, Get it right where you want it. Yeah, when I type in lace four millimeter, we just get two millimeter stuff. Uh, is that on the on the front end? Yeah. Can you go to the other side? All right. Should I tell you the bag's done? We're going to stitch it. Oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, it's not finished up with just, with just clips? It's not done? All right, I'll have to look it up. Call in, ask for Christy, and tell her you want the thick leather lace that's in the back of the bead on the back of the beads on retail. Christy used to work on the in the bead department. She should know right what what I'm talking right about. Right on, yeah. So, did you, did you switch over there to Terry? What? No, you're good. Did you use a guide or are you just going? Me? Yeah. I used the foot. So, let me show you the first stitch. So, if you use a guide, if you use the guide before you t get to Terry's part, I'll switch to the top. Sorry, Justin. So that's just the foot. I just go right along the foot, and that gets you a nice, clean edge. So if you have a roller guide and you use it, Andy used the roller guide yesterday. Yeah. And he set his depth, and then he did the other side at the same at the same depth. Mm hmm. Because he wasn't using the foot. So if if I do a 
another stitch, uh -huh. I would just come along here at the same side and use my stitch as my depth mm -hmm. and come right along and it would be right in here. Yeah. Uh, navy leather. I do have it. I I think we're going to... I have um, 12 pulled aside. Sorry, my last couple days I've been trying to get this... Make sure I was ready for this live. Because while Tony does leather craft every now and then... Not at any consistent ratio of time. I can dream up dreams and get get them ready, <clears throat> but I will gladly hand off this machine stitching to somebody else. Can I machine stitch? Yep. <laughs> but. Terry's faster at it. Yesterday, Anderson was faster at it, so I let him do it. Not admit to. Terry sews all day long. She should be faster at it, right? I like. I love sewing. I have one of these twenty sixes at home. You yeah. think? You think? Uh, sewing all day that you wouldn't want to sew all day, but oh. You definitely want to sew all day. Yeah. Very much a crap, for sure. You get you get used to it, and then you just can't get away from it. You just lo love it. She loves it so much we put her out on retail floor on Fridays. Just so out there and answer anybody's questions that come in. Absolutely. I was going to say, try to throw me off. Come in and ask me a, ask me a good question. I probably won't know the answer, but I'll figure it out. Am I double stitching it for looks or for strength? Um, does yes work? <laughs> it looks cool. It just, it looks cool. Is it going to add more strength? Sure, it might. If one, if one pulls, if one, you know, set of stitches pulls out. I guess it could help the strength, but more of on this bag. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Pineapple belong on pizza. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Careful with your answer here. Yeah, Chevy wants to know. Hmm. Well, I guess if you're in Hawaii, <laughs> or if you like pineapple. Yeah. Let's see. I, the first time I tried cheeseburger pizza, I was just like, what? A taco pizza. At the and Chasers. I was blown away. I was like, what? That is amazing. The taco pizza at Casey's is pretty good. I've had the barbecue with the jalapenos. That's amazing. And I'm not a hot, I don't like a hot and spicy stuff too much. But it just had the right amount of bite. It was just amazing. It's kind of good and bad that Casey's is right here. I know. <laughs> okay, does pineapple belong on Terry's pizza? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stryker says they're having issues with their class 26 and tension. Oh. Is Terry the person I can call and talk to? That or Jim. Jim. Terry answers questions. Jim will answer questions. Yeah. If you bought the machine here, great. If you didn't buy the machine here, awesome. Yeah. 
we will help you either way. Absolutely. What our hope is that you are successful with your machine. That's the biggest part. Exactly. You have a thread burner, sir? Uh, I got this one that's behind a lot of stuff. There is one on the machine there, too. Do -do -do. I noticed that you pull those to the top side, but it's not going to matter because they're going to be inside. That's correct. That's um... Usually I would pull them through. To the back side? Mm hmm But they're not going to show, so... Matter, it does not. You ready to sew the whole thing? Yeah, and so you can see I had why I made mine a little bit longer is just to make sure that that caught. Cut it off if you want to, leave it there if you want to. I don't think it's going to hurt anything having it there. Nope. All right. Now you're ready to stitch her up your side. Oh, wait. Nope. Don't do that yet. I you figured. You, you know what you got to do next. Mark your holes for your. Uh... I'm not going to rivet them on. I'm just going to. I'm just going to stitch my handles on. All right. But we got to put our handles on before we sew it together. Otherwise, we'll be hating ourselves. Well, while you're doing that, you want me to sew on the bag. So the. So the top part on. Mm -hmm. Do you have to switch back to your other thread? Nope. Okay. Go for it. So when I start, I like to start behind behind a handle. Um, that way it's a nice, nice clean. Sometimes you start on the ends, but me personal, I like to start behind a handle. Then that you're way. purposely looking to see where you crossed your stitches at. Yeah. Good insight. Terry, what did you do before you came to Springfield Leather? Other I worked, things? I worked at McDonald's. Work, worked at McDonald's? 20 years. And then before that? Hagel's Garment Factory for 13 years. A seamstress? Yeah. And then I was a truck driver before, in between there. Yeah. Boy, I bet yep. she's got some stories. A, re a reefer truck. Reefer truck? Mm hmm. Refrigerating? Yeah. Yeah. My, bro My older brother uh, used to work on reefer units at Thermo King. Yeah. Uh, did you have a Thermo King unit or a carrier we unit? We did. You did we have did. a Thermo King? Mm -hmm. It worked amazing. The first uh, truck driving job was uh, with a company here in town. And then, uh, then another person wanted to hire us. Uh, my husband and I teamed up, and we used to have meat here called Willowbrook that was from the underground, and we would go all the way to California or to Florida and deliver it, and then pick up flowers and it was an awful awful job I want you to know this is sarcasm we had to go to Florida Keys and wait three days for our load oh to get the flowers yeah what a bummer what'd you do on the keys for for three days waiting for that load uh, probably just you know. sat in the truck no 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 sat in the truck and did no, nothing no. and just our company set us up in a, a little condo Oh, so you hung out at a condo that was probably on the beach? Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> what a bummer. I know, it was so depressing. Lil Fear said drove, he drove a flatbed uh, for Prime, which is a lot of people have probably heard of Prime. Flatbeds, they have... Headquartered here in Springfield. Such a harder time because everything that they have, they've got to either cover it up or... Tie it down. I mean, we we had to tie ours down for sure, but the, the weather plays a big role in having a flatbed. 
Uh, I, I love pineapple on pizza, by the way. Pineapple on pizza. I love it. Do, do you still have the regular sauce? Well, depends. Depends, Terry. Okay. That depends whether I have regular sauce or not. What meat do I have on there? Do I have Canadian bacon or do I have chicken? Chicken and pineapple? Chicken and pineapple with barbecue sauce. Wow. Barbecue chicken. Where have I been? Uh, uh, in the Florida Keys, hanging out of a condo for yeah, three days waiting true. for your load. That's true. Have that's you ever true. wrapped cantaloupe and bacon before? No. Cantaloupe and bacon. Cantaloupe and bacon. Uh, Stryker, your, your Texo thing is going to be close, I believe, to the Class 26. But Jim will still be able to help with it. I can almost guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Texo. What other have I missed any other thing? Dean was worried. Welcome in, Dean. Ron's leaving. Canadian bacon. Just say ham. Ugh. Just say ham. Sounds more official when you say Canadian bacon. Sounds so proper. Canadian, eh? Canadian. So what are you going to do with this bag? Uh, sell it. Sell it. Don't you think? I think so. Who wants it? Who wants it? Yeah, barbecue chicken with pizza, with pineapple. It is amazing. The bobbin adjustment locations. I would, ha yeah, we'd have to look at at that. But I, Jim helps everybody he's with machine. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a singer, he's done stuff with that. I, I, the only one I don't think that he's any good with because nobody's good with it, is the Chinese shoe patch machine, which is delightful for nobody. Okay. I want you to see this. It's right behind the... Oops. There we go. Yeah, go forward a little bit. So that's where I started. Yeah. That's what makes it nice where you... Uh, it's all nice and clean. Ta -da. Yeah, I don't really care where the Canadian bacon comes from because I love pork belly. Period. I'll go to the barbecue place here, get pork belly. Mm. All right. Oh, I need to get. Yesterday we. I'm done with my bag. We poked holes in it so we can line this up with the bottom. Mark our holes for our handle straps. Then Andy started to go like that, but he only punched holes on one side, and I said, that's not going to work for it. But you know what will work? Turn there you go. Pattern. Any bag that you do on the tote, um, if you want to do uh, what Tony and I have done, it, it, putting the, the different colors on it, always make sure your bag is. The bottom part is a heavier, heavier at the bottom, and it'll it'll stand all day. You know. You know, if I would have done it all out of that vintage, it wouldn't have stood. Right. Stood see, like that. See, it's kind of really loose, but it's it's a good sturdy the, bag. The liner helped it a little bit. Well, let's test it. Let's test it now that we've got it sewn oh, in. Yeah, let's yeah. test it with our phone in there now. See if it changed any. Oh, not a dang bit. It's very nice. Nice job, Terry. So there's your drop-in liner. Pretty simple. We got we. That was like an hour to do the drop-in liner. And I, I'm almost to the point that you're done with this bag. So you're done with it. Uh -huh. You're going to sew it. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. What do you think about putting some tape right inside those? 
I got some thicker tape back here. Here we are. Where's my snips at? Here's some. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How's that for length? You're going to have to stick that one down and then we'll peel it up and then I'll stick this one over the top of it. Why no Facebook Live today? Because it was not working. Mainly. Mainly that's the reason. It was being cantankerous. If, if we can have the that's an, that's an old word. Oh, here. Let me, let me cut that off. You think? Oh, scratched it. Price is dropping on it. Here, hold that for me. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Right there. Hit it with the snips. Oh, good. You can't even see it on screen. Perfect. It's on the bottom. Yeah, you're going to get scratches on the bottom of it. What What would you charge for a purse like this? I know you're not probably the best person to price today mm -hmm. because you undersell yourself all the time. I'm sorry. Fa yeah. Facebook got a Twitch. <laughs> I, what do you guys normally charge for a tote bag out there? What would be a price for yours? We talked about it. I said I would probably do a bag like this, one fifty or so with with the bottom like that. Not with the liner. The liner would have to cost more because I have to pay Terry to do the liner. Probably pay Terry to do the bag too. I have done some. What'd you sell a tote bag for? What'd I sell it for? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say. Because you wanted to make money. No. Oh. I'm 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 here to help people. I, I'm that. not I'm not here to make money and I I always try to do what I can to help somebody else. Mhm. Mm um Springfield Leather has just been an amazing amazing place and has taught me so many things. So why not return the favor? Don't do that yet. Sew it first and then attach the other one cuz it'll just pop, it'll just Papa. Oh, uh, I have some wing dividers here. You want to mark you yes. a stitch line on there? I don't. I don't know. You don't. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh. No, she can try to out humble me, but it ain't gonna happen. The most humble person there is. I enjoy helping people. Connie says three twenty five for lined bags. Unlined Jessa Farnsworth says one fifty. So maybe if we did this and we didn't add the second layer on there. I was looking at it. I think it was about if making two totes. I need that other strap so I can make sure that these are all the same. Uh, about four feet of leather of, of each to make two totes. Remember, if you get that canvas, you'll have enough canvas to be able to Make four. What are you doing down here? So I can go all the way around. Oh, I don't know. Wow, now you've done it. Now I've done it. Now it's only $120. The signature. <laughs> Terry's all about helping people, then have her. Name the prices on the live shopping. Ah! Name the prices. All right. 
I bet you we can saddle soap that and it'll come out. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Carry on. So we have taupe, 207, and I don't know what's in the bottom. Thir 138? Mm -hmm. Natural? No, I think it's brown. Brown. The, big, the biggest thing with, with pricing your products is don't sell yourself short. I don't know, Stryker, or, or if Connie, can you just tell us? I don't know if it'll let you post a link. I think that's what I had to do to try to get rid of some of the bots. Don't sell yourself short on your products. I was terrible about pricing when I did my photography stuff until a friend told me one time, he said, hey, I know I'm your friend and you want to charge me less, but I'm also your friend and I want to help you out. So I'll pay you more. So even if you're doing stuff for a friend, don't don't change your price just because of a friend. Oh, your word. Yep. I used to be afraid to tell people with prices because I thought maybe it was too expensive for them. Yeah. Very true. So I got to pay for that time too, because why? Time that you're taking away from doing something else, whether it's your family, hanging out with friends. What you need? Snippers. Okay. Do you email that to me? Let me get. I didn't see an email yet. Live at springfieldleather.com. What's happening? Oh well. You need some dimensions on something. Hmm. What are we measuring out? Somebody was wondering what the finished dimensions of the midtone were. Oh, perfect. I haven't given that one away yet. I just quoted a very first, a close friend who's family to me, 25% less than total prices. Justin says, material is one part of it, but time is a big one that people don't take into account. I have a tow right now that I have 15 hours into, mm. and if I don't sell it for 300 plus, I'll be losing money. I think that experience should be a part of those prices as well. Your your machine, if you're using a sewing machine, the wear and tear on your sewing machine. I charged I sh I charged wear and tear on my cameras. Yeah. My talent that I had shooting, also editing pictures is a big part of it. Laying out a wedding album. So design costs. And striker says they declined the discount. And wanted to pay full play price. Yeah. And I was no different. I still gave I still gave a discount to friends and family and let them decide whether they want to to take it or not. And most of the time they they didn't. So don't be afraid to charge for your stuff. I have done that. I've uh, projects and stuff I've done for people. Um they said, oh, no, 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 no. And then they gave me a big old tip. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, the machine okay. dial has been spun around in circles sometimes and spun the wrong direction, so you can't really tell what the actual stitch length is anymore. 
people we can count our stitches? We can. Hmm. That one doesn't want to pull back through. Mm -mm. And so everything, so that's Ooh. a part of your pricing. Could so a little bit less, or charge a little bit less if you had a sewing machine. We've been using the things to. We've been using the things we make to pay for our dog rehab. The totes we make sell for one fifty. Six, six stitches per inch. And Rich says we are likely too cheap. I shut my phone off, so I don't know what time it is. Uh, it's twelve nineteen. Oh. Yeah, since these are act as monitors for my other computer, or for my computer, just other screens. What's the time? Okay. I think Liz forgets to look at it. Come off there. Stab and pull. Don't do that to your friends. <laughs> I've had a blast. You have? I have. Are you going to come back for another video sometime? Sure. I'll leave that on there until you saw the other side. Unless you want me to take it off. Nope. We'll have to do the You're done. rope handles. Oh, there you go. SLC gets all my profits. Everyone oh, is quick to try and you barter what. with. Some small business but doesn't he hesitate to drop millions of dollars at McDonald's. Even even better, let's just go to an artist, an artist standpoint. Are you afraid to buy an MP3 album? Are you afraid to pay for Spotify so that artist gets their money? You're a leather artist. And now you want to barter and complain about my prices. But you'll buy a $50 t-shirt at, at a concert. So don't sell yourself short. Not sure where you got my email. Uh, <laughs> Connie sent the link to, to Strikers. I I have no idea. Oh, uh, let's see. I figure if a person is going as a true fan, they would generally pay full price. Tell you what, we had a situation come up yesterday and the customer didn't ask for anything. Just just was polite and it's easier to take care of a switch situation one if we know about it and two if you're kind about it so the way that you approach people about things treating others with kindness goes a long way we do have that here for sure how much does it cost to to be nice. Nothing. How much does it cost to be a jerk? Try it and see. It costs more than you might think. You thought you had your thought you had friends and then you don't. Yeah, you know, Kevin says don't don't lend money to friends, just give money to friends. Just I give money that. just give money in general. I have if, done that. Don't don't expect anything in return. You're foolish if you think you to expect something in return. Especially when you buy someone's food or something. Buy someone's lunch. Yep. So 
Somebody gouged my leather with a... I don't know who that would be. Yeah. Ah, I rubbed Shit. it back out now. It's good to go. Good to go. I've raised the price on it now. I've doubled it. It's $300 tote bag now. You guys have talked me into it. I've talked well, myself into it. And Tony touched it. Oh, yeah. A Terry sewn it. My hands cut it all out. Cut it out. Charles says, when pricing, be honest with yourself and your skill level. <laughs> Every wants to be Denny Lowe skilled prices. I tell you, Denny's the same way. Denny's, Denny's will tell you, he sucks at pricing his own stuff. He sent me one thing one time, and he's like, hey, can you print this out? And I said, what are you charging for this? He said, not enough. I said, have you agreed to a price on it? He said, nope. And I said, then let's talk about it. Gave the, guy, gave the guy a different price than he was originally going to do, and the guy didn't even bat an eye. Yeah. He's, and still said, I think you're selling yourself short. Wow. So I think it's a common problem with most. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to don't price tell something. yourself short. I'm, I'm preaching to myself, too. Yeah, right. It comes down to when you really love something, you're just going to do it. What matters to you? Being in trouble with that price and point. Yeah. See Rusty walking back and forth in front of the glass here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He looked in but didn't turn. Didn't come in? Didn't turn. Just looked. Just window shopping. Very nice. Got a tote bag for sale for Got him. Got a tote bag. Going to have two here. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. Mm -hmm. And we're, artisans are probably also the most moody. I think sometimes we suck at criticism. Well, when you learn a craft, you're excited about the craft itself that you're doing, mm -hmm. and you're blown away of. I did this. Wait a minute. Now somebody wants to buy it. Right. Okay, you can. You can buy it. And you don't have any idea what to charge, and you. You want to tape don't. it, or you just want to clip it? Just clip it. Okay. Uh, I really probably wouldn't even clip it. All right. Well, then carry on. Then carry on. I was just lining up. Make sure when you do this part that you line you up the top, but also. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get down to this, you want to make sure where you've put those two things together that mm -hmm. they line up pretty close to where they're at because when you're going to turn, those are going to be together. So mm -hmm. do your best to get. those. Because you always want to make your top, top part of your bag. You don't, don't want to sew down here because it may, may get. Oh, here. Yeah, switch to the top camera again. It may get. You know, once Make you start from here, yeah, it may end up to where you be a little bit short, and you don't want that. So start at your top and get that lined up, and then we get down there, we can stretch it just mm -hmm. a little bit to get those two seams where we. Which sewed they're the, running really good, really really close. Yeah. All right, two stitches left. Differences between a craftsman and an artist. <laughs> what you charge? <laughs> I guess it depends on how you look at it. Can a craftsman be an artist? And can an artist be a craftsman? Or all artists craftsmen? Or all craftsmen artists? So then with this little hump here, since you got quite a bit of leather coming together, we'll get as close as we can. And then we'll probably have to raise the foot and walk it up there. Nope. It was able to do it. Turn it and shove it in. Mm -hmm. Just when you uh, start up the hill... Try to make sure that your presser foot is coming up. If not, then you 
Probably raise the presser foot. Yeah. Not differences, just the difference between a craftsman and an artist. So we'll sew all the way down to that point. Mm -hmm. Then we'll switch to the other side because for our box corner is the next step. Hey, thanks for the gifted sub there. Charles says, Jim Linnell is an artist, but most of most of us in here are just craftspeople. Do you enjoy it? Then you're an artist. One done. You want to do the next one? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd invite you over here. I can gladly look over your shoulder. Or I could just look at the screen and see it there. I always say the over and over again when somebody gets a new machine that you always have to hold that, hold your stitches, hold your thread, the first two stitches. Mm -hmm. Not the bottom, just the top. You do that. You're, you're home free. If you don't, you if you don't, those first two loops may not really even hold anything. It's right. going to be really loose. Yeah. Okay. David says, a craftsman, I think, of focused discipline, but an artist is more all over the place, mm -hmm. but they are mutually exclusive. I think a lot of the craftsmen if I just made this tote bag over and over and I didn't do it like this, am I an artist or a craftsman? Probably more of a craftsman. Connie says, look for her on Instagram. We can see her tote bags on there. Very nice. I assume that we look for the same screen name as you have here. Connie Barnett. What your YouTube name is. Excuse me. I'd make a tradesman, Tony. Or make me a tradesman. Now, we want to find the center of... I'll show you, I'll show you a trick. I got a trick. Use your eyeballs. True. Okay. What's your trick? Make you a little crease in there. Mark it. You see that? Mm -hmm. So you've gotten it flush, so you can be a little. You know what sounds good for lunch today? Oh, I brought pineapple. I brought pizza. Oh. Mm. Well, so when you Never mark mind. that, yeah, come over here just a little bit. So we put a little center mark on there, and now we're going to line up our seam that we just sewed through, and now we got yep. the center. Sew that up. Sew it up. At the base, leather is a craft. Those that do it would be craftsmen or a craft woman. Manipulation and combination of various designs, it becomes an art. I would agree with that. That was kind of the point that I was going to. Variations on a leather crafter. Brand Doom. What ounce leather are you working with? Hmm. The handles of the bag are eight to nine. The body of the bag 
was a medium four ounce on the piece that I have. Uh, the leather itself, whenever you get it, is a four to a four to five ounce. And then the bottom is the same as the handles, but I thinned this one down to a six ounce. That one's thinned to a five. So the, the base is a, a five, six. The body is a four. The handles are a eight, nine. It was the full weight. But this one has a liner in it. <laughs> a nice variety of weights. Yeah. Makes it easier when you have a splitting machine here. The only reason I used a heavier bottom on this one is because the sides of this one are going to be a little bit um, floppy. We talked about that at the beginning. So sewing up the rest of our box corner, and then what will it be time for? Roll reversal. Then I'll try to shove the insides out. <laughs> Hi, Jameson. Jameson, are you coming to be on video? I was really As she covers her face and walks by. All right, well, then I won't make you be on video. Hey, come here for a second, Jameson. We're not really actually live. Look how, look how good this tote bag looks. You lying me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look, your face got just as red as your shirt did. There's Jameson. She's on the phone. She'll take your orders on there. She always gets nice compliments. Her face is so red right now. <laughs> I didn't really think she would come over. It's just me <laughs> saying that. How do you want to do it? Uh, it looks like you did a fine job. So yesterday we turned the top of it and then started doing as much as we can, just to try to keep that top seam from ripping. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, That's the way my back looked. Look how nice. There we are. Beautiful. Complete. Very nice. <laughs> and I tell you what, even though this bottom is stiff, once it gets out, it's still super smooth. Yeah, when you sew the sides up on the bag, always make sure that you're making a good lock stitch because um, having to turn the bag inside out, you really have a good chance of busting out your seams. Yeah, and that was why we were worried about that one since we left the top so that mm -hmm. you could put a drop in in it. We were worried about that. Boy, that extra ounce taken out from this bottom helps just enough. Push. Almost there. It's really hard to turn a bag in the shot of the camera. Yeah. You want to like you want to hug it. Oh. We, that was helping a lot. You oh, hold it down a minute. Do it, do it Have a friend come to hold the other side of your bag. Yeah, that helped a lot. All right. There you are. Now I'm going to take... Kind of get my top pieces back together. And then train my bottom. And one. And two, and one, and two. Is that how you train your bottom? Yeah. You could probably put those feet that we have. I know. Uh, Andy was saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I may just push that back in just a little bit. Give it a pinch there, that way the seams aren't coming out so much. This was fun. I like the liner part. It has a big enough big enough place for your pockets. So I'm just tucking that seam. I don't we can see it here. Just trying to get my threads back in just a little bit so it's not pulling so much on them. And then just pinching that down. With this being a, a veg and a split on the back, I could probably wet it down. And then I'm up my sides. Having the alternate color on the bottom, I probably would have changed the black thread. On your handles? On the on the ins. Oh, on here. that mm -hmm. part. Yeah. You could yeah, you could do that whenever you whenever you stitched up your sides, done it in kind of hard. I guess you would have done all the sides in black. But being here, if you had a little bit of weight in it and put push through, it wouldn't have that. Oh yeah, even yeah, because you would sew the sides and mm -hmm. then do that in black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What do you think? I love the pattern. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do to it. Even cut it down even farther. Um, Transition the opening. Yeah, even between the two of these, if you if you look at them, I cut this one a little bit different. It's a little more square mm -hmm. than the flare. Mm -hmm. Square. It's more square than the flare. Square than the flare. This one's and a little. This one's a little more true to the pattern. The second time makes, makes this one uh, open up easier. Yeah, having the lining in it. Oh yeah, for sure. See? That one I can hold it there, but. I like both of them. I mean, use that so simple pattern and then spice Absolutely. it up a little bit. Absolutely. All right, let's see what we got. Striker found Connie on IG. Very nice work. I polished wood globe for an old stair post to turn. That's how he turns bags. Turning bags is a major pain. <laughs> Scratch it. Yeah, you can see. That's when where I, you get your workout. I hit it with the snips. I don't know if you can see it or not. So you can see that I, where I hit it with the snips. But I'll take some saddle soap and saddle soap that back down. Have you ever attempted a tote out of natural veg tooling that you have to turn inside out? You know, we had that green, Herm, we had that green Herman Oak mm -hmm. uh, and we made that bowling ball bag out of mm -hmm. it. And Denny was trying to turn it, and he was struggling and struggling and struggling. He went and, since it's all veg, he went yeah. and he dumped it all in a in a bucket of water. And he's like, "There we go. Now we got that it worked. turned." So thanks, Terry, for showing us the drop in You're line, welcome. and we got that through there. Similar bag in five to six, though. Five to six would be a great um, for this. Like I said, if this one had been a little bit heavier, uh, I, it, I wouldn't have had to do the bottom. Other than it just look, I, I think it makes yeah. it look really classy with not adding that yeah. much more work for yourself, but adding to your bottom line. And then doing the drop in liner, make a, a right side out tote bag and then flip it the other way. Yep. And yeah, then you, you just, got it. Just turn it a quarter of an inch. And uh, when I put in the drop in bag, I, I didn't put it all the way to the top. I dropped it down a quarter inch. So when you go to fold, Turn it under, you do, you're not so bulky at the top. Yeah, and I was just looking. The only thing that we probably could have done differently on these corners, it's hard for it to kind of match up at that point. Mm -hmm. If we would have left a little bit more of our stitch out here whenever right. we made it to right. give us more to turn, even when we made it to turn, we could have clipped our corners just a little bit right. to let them overlap a little bit differently. But two bags in a couple days. First, I had to figure out how I wanted to make the first one, so the first day was kind of planning and cutting out, out everything properly. 
But there, some pretty leather. Yeah, I thought it looked good. Uh, the vintage cowboy is on flash sale right now. I think it's five bucks a square foot uh, if you have a wholesale account. 21, 22 crazy days starting November the 9th. Look out for more stuff on that. Tomorrow, I'm going to do live shopping, but I'm not going to start probably until 2.30 because I have to go get my daughter from school. So if you do live shop, it's going to be a little bit later start tomorrow. Um, Friday, Rusty and Kevin are going to do trading cards. We'll see if Rusty Ooh, tools or not. Fine. I think he might do some. He's like, it's been so long since I've had a swivel knife in my hand. I said, that will be the fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, th I think we got all the questions taken care of there. Thanks for Justin for driving the ship over there today. Thank Thanks you, for Justin. Terry coming in to doing the drop in liner yeah. and having a conversation, having fun, Glad and doing do all it. the sewing. Glad to do it. Glad all right, you guys it. have a great, a great rest Come of the day. Come see me Friday. Friday, Terry's on the floor. Make sure you like and subscribe so we can get to 50,000 subscribers and we'll make a leather YouTube little medallion Woo. thing. Bye.